All right, so, am I framed all right? Yeah. Welcome to another episode of Around the Block Talk. I'm your host, Los, and today I have the honor of having Blake Jackson, a prof professional photographer and co-founder of They Shootin', a photography crew here in Denver and platform that is putting out some amazing photography. Uh, Blake, thank you for joining me. I appreciate you having me. I appreciate you being on the show. So today, of course, because we have the professional photographer today, we are going to be talking about photography and the value of great images and what that does to your branding. And you know, one of the main things is a lot of people tend to forget that they need good photography, right? Everybody needs good photography, right? It's the first thing that your potential clients or the folks you want to work with is going to see and really have one impression when it comes to that. So having great photography really is going to set you above and beyond your competitors at this point. Today we have what, three or four points that we're going to go through today to talk about photography. Yes, indeed. Now here's the thing is people don't think that they need good quality footage or good quality photography, but it's a must. So let's start off with the first point. The first point is? Well the first point is every brand, person, company uses photography in some way, shape, or form. Uh, whether that is on their website, social media, or in print, pretty much everyone can use photography. And the last thing you want to do is have a potential company or a potential client or customer find your photography and it be low quality, right? Uh, I see, I work with a lot of clients that if you go through their Instagram, it's basically all these photos on their phone. Mm -hmm. um, and the last thing you want is for them to see that as their first impression of your company and it be a bad impression. Um, you know, there's a lot of times I'll see flyers for like a concert or a local event and not only are the graphics not really up to par, but photography is just pixelated into off of it. And guess what, I'm not gonna go to that again. Yeah, right? yeah. That has a huge effect on the quality, right? Big effect on that. So it has a big, big effect on, you know, if somebody's gonna take your brand or company seriously. So if you have high quality photos, that's your first impression that you have of that person you wanna make sure it stands out. You have that high quality. Exactly. And really what, break it down a little bit. What does high quality photos relate to the quality of your business? Is there a relationship? Absolutely. Well, there's, there's a perceived relationship, right? Yes. If a, if a customer or a client perceives your photos to be low quality, they're gonna perceive that your particular product or service that you provide is gonna be low quality as well. Yes. Um, obviously, you have to have a product that backs that up, but it's not gonna mean anything if you never got to the point of them actually trying out your product. If they look at your, anything that you produce in media or any type of advertising to be low quality, they're gonna associate that with low quality as well. Yeah, definitely. And that's very important. A lot of clients tend to think that their website, their visuals, their photography, their video, doesn't need to have any sort of quality. A good example is if, you know, if you're doing a restaurant or you're doing fashion and, and you're taking low resolution, bad photos with your iPhone, you're gonna give a bad impression. When was the last time you saw a photo of an amazing plate of food, but had it be a horrible photo? Would you wanna eat it? Would you even wanna taste the food? That's, that's the difference between good quality photography and bad quality photography. And that goes across everything you do. It's safe to say, whether it's your brochure, whether it's your website, whether it's your business card, or your, your social media, high quality is where it's, it's at, it's, right? It's, it's key, right? Uh, if they're going to perceive that you didn't take the time to produce like high quality image, they're going to automatically perceive that you're not going to take the time to have a high quality product associated with it. And that's critical. You don't want to skip out on not having high quality. So that's the first important point about photography. And the second point is? Well, really focusing on your social media that goes along with that, right? Yes. Um, everybody has a phone and everybody has one app or another, whether that's Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, what have you. Mm -hmm. um, but say for example, you're gonna be on, on Instagram, really focusing on having a lot of, of, of great high quality images to share on your social media and, and the frequency of being able to do that uh, is really gonna go a long way yeah. to being able to outreach to, to your, your potential client. The last thing you want is your competitor in the same space to be in the face of your potential client more than you are. Mm -hmm. So if, you, if you're gonna be on Instagram, which is a image-driven app, you wanna make sure you have high quality images mm -hmm. to be able to be consistent and have the frequency of posting. That way, you're being reached out to your, your, your potential client as opposed to your competitor. 
and it's critical. Listen to what he's saying. Blake is saying that you have to have social media on your platform because it's one of the many ways of, in, uh, of leaving an impression. In most industries, the minimum number of impressions that you need to have on a client before they could possibly take action is seven impressions. And in some industries, it's 50 impressions, 100 impressions. And what if, you know, people are on social media, there's billions, there's like one, I would say 1.5 billion people mm -hmm. on the planet are on social media. Mm -hmm. That is easily three times the size of the United States. So people are on social media and what Blake is saying is you need to have that platform, but have that quality content on there. Have those beautiful photos. Right, and make sure it's applicable to what you're doing, right? Um, it doesn't have to necessarily be photos of your product, or it doesn't have to be photos necessarily of the service that you provide. But if it's applicable to, it's adjacent to what you provide, providing that as a story that leads into the branding of your particular product is very important. And it all starts with high quality images. Yes, all and that goes back to storytelling. The episode that we did with Lady Speech, that combined with high quality, telling a story, you need to do that. You need to have high quality content, but also tell a story. And that's what Blake is saying is don't just throw up, you know, if, if you guys are, you know, if you sell shoes, it's great to throw on the shoes, but what about the lifestyle? What about the story sure. of the creator? What about the story of what those shoes produce in terms of an experience? And that's what you need to tell through high quality photography, exactly. okay? Exactly. And it's gonna go a long way. We've seen, you know, you throw out consistently uh, uh, content down there. You're, you can go from anywhere from maybe five to a hundred uh, likes and followers instantly if you're a local business. Sure. Now, if you've got 3.2 million followers, right. of course, you're gonna be looking at a thousand followers right. on a regular basis, maybe a 200 uh, followers, new followers on a post. But for you as a local business, you can very well be growing a hundred people a week right. if you're consistent with high quality exactly. content, right? Exactly. So, that leads into the next key component is once they look at this content, what is that third point that we're leading we're, into? We really, we're all talking about businesses here, right? And we're talking about eventually converting them into a potential client. Mm -hmm. uh, a, a great example of that is I was working with a jewelry company at the end of last year, beginning of this year. Um, they were really struggling with the fact that they weren't able to get their message across. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they had a you know, pretty, pretty average or middling size following on Instagram. Um, but they really weren't able to be consistent with the message that they're giving. Um, so not only were we able to shoot about 10 of their products um, and come up with a great um, lifestyle st type uh, photo shoot for them, but we're able to also talk about, okay, when are we gonna post these photos? What type of photos are we gonna post? Which one is gonna convey the message you wanna post? How often are we gonna be posting these? Um, and really being able to sit down with them and come up with a strategy of, all right, today I'm gonna to post this photo and this is gonna be the story associated with it. Today I'm gonna to post in this photo. Um, and going from that, we we're able to increase their, because they, they had a, uh, an Instagram business account. So we're mm -hmm. able to look at analytics and we're able to yep. look at engagement and conversion rate and things of that nature. We're able to increase their, uh, their engagement rate by 15% in a matter of two weeks, That's which led them to increasing their followers. I think they increased their followers by 100 followers just in a matter of two weeks. Um, which led to more traffic on their website, which led to them converting them into potential customers, yep. which leads to more dollars, right? Yep. That's what we're trying to get down to. Yep. Um, and so when it comes to Instagram and social media and photography, this isn't about popularity. This isn't about um, just gaining traction with your Instagram. It's about gaining new customers and new yes. clients, and it's about being in their face. New followers and new, and new people, that's great, but if it doesn't convert over into a potential client, it's all for not. But once again, it all started with looking at their Instagram from before they started working with me to afterwards and seeing the, the quality of the photography, being able to lend them to becoming more credible. Yes, and that's a very good point. The third point being converting someone. Now, we all heard of sales funnels. If you haven't, look it up. But basically a sales funnel is, is like a funnel, like a cone. You, you are putting content out there and they're funneling down to them becoming an action taker, a, a potential client. And the way you do that is exactly what Jake is talking about, is you have to, you, you have to put, you know, Blake is very uh, in tune, if you will, 
to that funnel. That means that if you put content on your platform, your social media platform, the goal is is that for them to take action right. and convert them into a viewer, a follower, but also leading to your website because your website is your online home. Right. And that's the place where you can capture their information, you could have them sign up, you could have them join uh, the newsletter, if they wanna get a consultation, if your business is set up that way, right. you wanna convert them. So Blake has a very important point that you need to create this funnel and using your social media is a huge funnel that gets them down into where's the next place to your website and from there is you want to capture that information you want to capture that visitor and that's where you turn you know visitors and viewers into clients and that is what Blake has is a perfect example for the jewelry store is that they needed traction to the website because the website had all their jewelry right that's where you got to check out all the good stuff you got to find out what you wanted but people didn't find that out without having some sort of cross-pollinization if you will from the social right. media and social media is just one cog of a, a massive overall promotional and advertising effort um, but if they find your social media you want to make sure they stay and they stick around and if they see stuff that's applicable to them they're gonna stick around and they're gonna become more engaging with you um, and eventually they'll, they'll become paying customers and that's what mm -hmm. the goal is yeah always is so make sure that your content is good and set it up for converting people. Now that leads us to the last component, which I think, in my opinion, and what, what I've seen really grow for people is this last point, because this is where some real juice comes into play right. for you to start getting followers, and that is? Collaboration, right? Mm -hmm. So right now on Instagram, or maybe even on Twitter, we have this whole uh, influencer program or thing that's mm -hmm. really taken over, over America. Now, there there's, might be some difficulties that come along with that as far as like exploiting the artists and the people that are creating the content, but there's a lot of, of great companies that see the value of influencers, quote unquote, that have an influence over their social media accounts. You know, I've been reached out to by many companies. I worked with Buzz, Budweiser last year, I worked with Coach last year. They didn't want to use any of those images on their particular social media platforms. They wanted to cherry pick my following by me creating content for my Instagram page. So as a company, say you're a bad company and you want to create a little bit more of a wider net, well, if you have a thousand followers, there's only so many people you can reach out to. But if you identify someone that is stylish, that is an influencer within that particular community that might have 10,000 followers, it would be wise of you to possibly reach out to that individual and talk about creating content, creating paid content for that particular individual. Now, there, there might be folks that would be okay with creating content for free just for an exchange of goods and things of that nature, but you have to make sure you walk that line of not trying to be disrespectful to them, of them, you know, of their talent, of the gift that they have of creating great content. And a lot of folks are, are realizing that by paying these individuals to not only create this content, but really be able to reach out to their particular target demographic. Because now you, you're, you're gonna be exposed to thousands of individuals that never knew about your product in the first place. Yes. And now they're gonna have a whole new set of individuals that are gonna know about you. And guess what, they trust my opinion, and they're gonna, once again, go back to your Instagram, yep. and go back to your website, and once again, that's gonna be conversions. Now, on the back end of that, if you're looking at, say, for, for example, um, the, something that I really looked at that was great to grow my following was collaborating with other individuals that are on that platform that I feel like would be appropriate within my target yep. demographic. Okay. I knew, for example, that I wanted to work in the music industry. Oh, okay. I knew I wanted to work with musicians. So I reached out to as many musicians locally here as possible and provided my service for free just so I could, A, show them the value of my particular service, and then B, being able to be exposed to their particular audience, uh, audience, as well as other musicians that are in their industry, which allowed me to get legs within that as well. So that's a perfect example of how if you collaborate with the right type of individuals, whether it's companies, brands, influencers, whatnot, it'll allow you to have access to a demographic or to people that you would not normally have access to as well. So I think that goes a long way, but it, it has to be organic and it has to make sense. You just can't be reaching out to everybody all willy-nilly just because they have a large following yeah, right yeah it has to be someone that fits within your demographic it has to be someone that you can build a partnership with mm -hmm. and it can't just be a one-off this has to be a long-term relationship yes. that you're building um, and it can go a long way yeah I agree with you the collaborating part is like 
putting your content on steroids. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that is, you know, Blake had a very good point is that one when you go collaborate make sure that you collaborate with people in your lane right so let's say you have a restaurant collaborate with maybe an executive chef right. that is in town that's on tour right. um, collaborate with other people maybe a pastry shop you know uh, do a collaboration that fits within what you're doing you know if you're selling a uh, sports gear try to collaborate with some of the best trainers in the city and get content that kind of you can splice and right. separate to both of your platforms but what he's saying though is and it's a key thing is that you want to be able to collaborate with their following so let's yep. say you want to work and you have that business gym and you want to work with a with an amazing uh, uh, trainer you want to go ahead and get a collaboration going so that your content is on their platform exactly. so if they have a hundred thousand followers it's their hundred thousand uh, followers that are looking at it I've seen collaborations that are disastrous where you had people that paid money for a personality they've done content and they've only put it on their platform right. and their platform only had two thousand followers help them. and that and that person that they hired had three million what you need is you need those people to create content of your stuff on their platform right. and that's really the big secret for collaborating and when you collaborate you want to be able to collaborate in a way that you can get product to them you can get your content to them it doesn't have to be hey today we're got 1995 and I have my celebrity here right. gonna be saying yes right. buy it. no you don't <laughs> want that you want to look at really clear examples look at DJ Khaled okay DJ Khaled does an amazing job on Snapchat, on Instagram, and all these other influencers. What they do, and you'll notice, is that they're getting Nike sent to them, right? You've got the guy that does jewelry sending, you know, DJ Khaled just had his kid, right? So exactly. now you have the tailor doing suits for his son, right? And that is the collaboration that you want to be doing. You don't want to be selling anything online, but you want to be collaborating so that your content, back in the day or in movies, they call that product placement, right? You want to be doing product placement, but in a collaborative sense. Yep. And I think that's really the big takeaway is collaborate, collaborate with the right people, but make sure that you do it in a way that is showing the lifestyle, showing what right. you're about, and not be obscenely selling right. stuff online. And, and it has to come off genuine, right? Yes. I think Very a lot of times uh, when it comes to collaboration, you look at it like, why the hell do they do that? You know, it makes absolutely no sense. I mean, you can tell the person that is pushing that product is only doing it because they got a paycheck or they're only doing it because they're getting a free product. You know, I've turned down many, many, many opportunities to uh, create content for my for my particular Instagram page because I didn't feel like it made sense. Mm -hmm. You know, it doesn't make sense. I, I'm not gonna be, you know, pushing, you know, fit, fitness products. I don't, my, if you look at my Instagram, when have I ever talked about fitness products? Yeah. It mm -hmm. makes no sense. So it has to fit in with that particular person. But once again, you have to avoid being exploitative because I think right now there's an issue where uh, a lot of folks that, you know, photographers, content creators are feeling like they're being taken advantage of by these larger companies by just saying, we'll give you product if you push our, if you push our product. Mm -hmm. Well, if you're a large company, you have the budget to be yeah. able to, to be able to pay yep. these individuals yep. to do this type of content. But at the end of the day, money isn't everything. It has to line up with what you create normally and is does it make sense with your particular brand yeah because you can spend a lot of money and hurt your brand exactly. if you do it wrong exactly so let's recap you have to have some key components about photography and one first and foremost is high quality photography right absolutely high quality photography means and equates to high quality business products and services okay exactly. so you got to do that the second point is going to be the second point, I, forgot, I completely forgot what yeah. we were talking okay. about. Okay, what was the second point? Uh, uh, oh, high quality, social media. Social media. Thank social you. media. <laughs> okay, so let's take that from the top, okay? So, so to recap, in order to really influence and have a positive impact on your business through photography is you gotta have high quality content, right? High quality photography equates to high quality business, high quality product, and high quality service. The second point is social media. Get that, cast your net out with your social media. Instagram is a beautiful platform to have photography. Exactly. Make sure you have it out there. The, the third one is conversion, okay? You don't want to do all this work to not have any clients. It's right. nice to have a like, it's nice to have a follower, but your goal as a business owner is to have your content convert someone so that they go from your social media 
to your website so that you can collect their information. And that's part of the sales funnel. So please look up the sales funnel and understand that social media is a huge, powerful component of that. It's kind of like fishing. You cast the net out so that you bring the fish back to the boat. The boat is your website, the net is your social media, okay? And now the fourth component, which is a huge component that people are sleeping on, only the big giants understand this, right. is collaboration. Collaborating with the right people, collaborating with people that are in your lane exactly. and that have a following so that you can leverage your following, uh, their following with your growth, okay? That's gonna be a huge equation. Um, I think that was beautiful knowledge, man. I mean, how do you feel about it? Uh, I hope people can put this to good use because uh, based off of kind of what I've been doing and what I've based my career off of is everything starts with high quality photos and that this goes right down on the line. But if the first thing they see is low quality stuff, they're not, you're never going to get anywhere. Huge, huge. So make sure that you get your game up, get your photo game up, get it up on everything, whether it's a brochure, your website, make sure that the high quality imagery is on all of your content. And also try to use some people on there because uh, psychologically people react to other people. If you like this video and found value, please like it, share it, and subscribe to our YouTube channel so you can get more marketing advice that works. I'm your host, Los, and thank you for joining me on this episode of Around the Block Talk, and we'll look for you on the next one. That's it, man. man. My man. Oh, man. <laughs> that was dope. Oh, That's fun. Blake? I think it went really well. I think so too. I think you broke off some serious knowledge. Uh, you know, uh, Gary Vaynerchuk says that, uh, and if you don't know who Gary Vaynerchuk is, you should look him up. Gary Vaynerchuk, who is a media mogul, says that 99% of the people will never use any of this amazing knowledge, but only the 1% that are willing to put the effort into it will actually reap the biggest benefits. You agree? Yep, yeah, be the 1%. Be the one percent. The Not good, the, the good, good, good kind of one percent. <laughs> exactly, the good one percent. Yeah. And with that, we're out. We'll see you on the next one, guys.